the UK Americana Bar TV show is catching up with none other than the last of the full-grown men, the king of Americana, Webb Wilder. Wow, thanks. <laughs> thanks for joining the show, Webb. Thanks for having me, Eric. You know, I couldn't think of uh, doing an interview with anybody better in Nashville that is more tied in. And even, uh, you know, I reached out to you about some of the Americana artists that you cover on your radio show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I think people are always wanting to define Americana, and sort of the beauty of it is that you can't. And, the, and the, the Terry Adams in NRBQ, NRBQ being sort of the, the least credited greatest band of all time, you know, would say he hated the uh, Border Patrol, people who want to categorize music, right. you know. But uh, I think anything of an organic nature that has a rootsy thing, the best music has roots and then goes somewhere new with the roots, you know. And Definitely. Americana is full of stuff like that, and I think a lot of people associate it uh, with sort of its postmodern roots, which would lie in like the country rock and folk rock, right. you know, and uh, the progressive country movement of the 70s. Oh, totally. But, you know, you could go back to what's, what's not Americana. Like I say, but, I mean, Muddy Waters, you know, I mean, Hank Williams, I mean, right. all of it. So but today we're, we're seeing a lot of different stuff, and, and I do this weekly show Correct. that reflects the national U.S. Americana album chart called now, The List. And what is the li what channel is The List on also? Well, all over the world, I suppose you can hear it on uh, WMOT.org. Right. And here in Nashville, it's 89.5. It's a weekly show. It's a two-hour program, and, you know, the chart... Some stuff stays the same, but it never stays exactly the same because there'll be new stuff and then other stuff will be going up or down. Right. Yeah. Well, and I know you have a lot of the, the huge artists such as Buddy Miller, Jim Lauderdale. Yeah. You know, there's so many incredible Americana artists now. But I want to talk a little bit about you okay. and how you got your beginnings in music. And, uh, you know, and, and also that, you know, when you moved here to Nashville in 1984, Webb. 82. 82. Yeah. Wow. Two years earlier. Mm -hmm. And then uh, your career's kind of taken off with everything you've done, and also didn't hurt that you've also been an actor in multiple movies, including the short that kind of started off, uh, yeah, that's created your, uh, some of your persona. Sure, yeah. Let's All talk that. about that. Well, uh, yeah, I moved here in 82, and um, I had been in a band, and I'm from Mississippi, born and raised. And Hattiesburg. Been, yeah, buddy. And uh, I'd been in a band called The Drapes, and um, you know, I was sort of used to being a big fish in a little pond, and I moved up here, and it was two and a half years later that I played the next gig. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But by that point... I think that's with a lot of people in Nashville. I'm sure, you know, and uh, and you heard the term showcase a lot. Right. And so um, it was hard to get people to pledge their allegiance to your band because you couldn't put them on salary. Yeah. You couldn't even promise them a hotel room. You know, it's like, well, are you willing to, you know, play for nothing, sleep on floors and all that sort of stuff? <laughs> So I got these guys to agree to do a showcase with me, and, uh, and and one of them had a previous commitment. But many years later, he became my full-time bass player, Tom Comet. Who's oh been yeah, aboard now since amazing. Ninety-six, yeah. Right. So um, yeah, we 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 started touring, and we did an independent record that people still seem to enjoy. That. Uh, that was good to me all these years. Called it came from Nashville, which I still love. What well, a what thanks. a great album. And you know the reason we called it that is people kept saying back then. Because we more or less considered ourselves, I, I don't really like the term rock. I like rock and roll better for a term because I'm, you know, like the Stones roll, right? Right, you right. <laughs> but, um, uh, but people said, if you want to, you know, begin a rock deal, because really that's what it boiled down to. You wanted to attract a rock deal or a country deal. And we were never yeah. pursuing a music, what I would call a music row deal. Right. So anyway, they said, don't tell them you're from Nashville. <laughs> we said, okay, here I am in the hat, you know, and. Uh, we call the first album, It Came From Nashville. Right. Well, you know, and what I always admire too, Webb, is uh, how well you've blended in surf music and everything else. Like I was listening to your song earlier today, Nashville Bum. Yeah. And, and Human Cannonball. And you really, your musical style is like a blender of all the genres. Yeah. And that's what you do with your albums. And, and even in your latest one that came out, which is powerful stuff. Now, this is like a re-release. This is like older material, right? Yeah. Um, it's all, it was... It's all previously unreleased, so we felt like a lot of this stuff deserved to see the light of day. These are recordings, live and studio, lo-fi and multi-track that were recorded between the years of 1985 and 93. Wow. And anything we could remix, we did. Yeah. And uh, so it sounds really good, and um, the stuff that was lo-fi mastered up, so it sounds better. But even if, if you're a diehard fan and you say, well, wait a minute, you said previously unreleased, I see some titles. These aren't those versions. Really? Like, there's a song called No Great Shakes. This version has different lyrics. Wow. Totally different well, you know, And what I love about the album, too, on it, Web, is that it's got a picture of you today on the front, but then you've got the vintage 80s photo on the back. Yes, 
it's a real scream. I'm the human cannonball. I'm the human And actually, that's a vintage photo on the front, too. Really? That was from a French magazine. A re, it's re doctored up, you know, yeah. it's kind of distressed, but it was from a well, French Well, you know, and, and it was so much fun listening to this one, but also, you came off your last album, which was uh, Mississippi Modern, which was critically acclaimed. That's a hard follow-up, and you're already working on new music again this year. Well, and you know, I'm kind of lazy and slow and picky, and so I thought, you know, if we can put up the old stuff, it'll, it'll keep my... Uh, presence in the world to whatever small degree my presence is a presence until we can make the next new new right. album and we're trying to make it now we're about six songs into it and I got together with George Bradfute who I worked with a lot last week and um, we did some sort of guitar vocal demos up for the next batch as pre-production so right. we sort of know where to go with these newer songs. Well you know I wanted to bring up for our viewers also to where in 2016 you toured the UK but before that you toured it as a solo act right Webb? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I mean, when, you, when you've been doing it this long, a lot of years can pass and you go, wow, I can't believe it's been that many years. So we had, a, we had a tour that my fans found memorable in 1989, where we opened all over the UK for the Georgia Satellites. Oh, wow. And so when I and, went- And you're friends with Dan also. Of course, yeah. And uh, we toured all over Canada with those guys. Had the same management. How great. Yeah, back in the day. And um, so anyway, I met a lot of people who remembered that tour. Um, so I hadn't been for a long time and, and I did a trio tour of Spain a few years ago and the guys went home and then I went solo to England. Wow. And I hadn't been to England in, I'm sure, 20 years or something. Right. And then I went back a couple of years later as a part of a little review that uh, was fronted by me, Warner Hodges from Scorchers and Dan Baird fame. Oh, totally. And, um, and Eric Roscoe Amble, who's done so many things. You know. Well, how do you see, you know, as, as with your career and everything going on in Americana music, where do you see this going forward? In the, in the coming years, Webb, because obviously, you know, with, with your brand and with your music, it keeps, to me, it keeps getting bigger and better. And with your radio show and everything else you're doing, how do you see the progression with Americana now? Well, the progression of Americana is in a very healthy state. I think, like anyone, you're always uh, hopeful your own career will, will keep going, you know. Yeah. But uh, I think Americana is, is full of young and new artists all the time. And, um, a lot of the old, you know, more senior elder statesmen are, are, as long as they can record and tour, people are there for them. Right. You know, and I mean, Mavis Staples is 80 and she's enjoying such a renaissance. It's so amazing. Yeah, yeah. When she was coming here to Nashville, it's like going, I love seeing that because I was a huge fan of Pop Staples oh, gosh, also, yeah. her dad and, yeah. and the great music that they made. And like you said, too. A lot of that music, it's like when we've been at the Americana Fest here in Nashville, you know, the Mavericks are considered Americana, and Dwayne Eddy, and Don Henley, and yourself, and artists that before, they were hard to put in a category. Well, I'll tell you what my own theory about that is, is that up until a certain point, you know, country was very... Uh, restrictive and, and sort of off to itself and people like Graham Parsons, oh, you yes. know, and Poco um, and the Eagles sort of tried to change that and Emmy uh, mm -hmm. and, and they successfully bled over and crossed over and Emmy has a very unique career trajectory in that she never ever compromised herself. Right. Yet had a bunch of mainstream country success yep. and was all, always maintained her, for lack of a better word, Americana or progressive country, or neo-traditionalist, whatever you can call it, right. integrity. She was able to walk between those areas very She easily. is a treasure, you know, oh, it's, it's unbelievable. And uh, and Graham Parsons and, and, and the sweethearts, sweetheart of the rodeo era, Birds, met with some resistance. Yes, they did. But, but here's what I really think. I think that, you know, mostly starting with the Beatles, although Buddy Holly and Jerry Lee and even Elvis had, had an eclectic body of work. Right. But since the Beatles, let's face it, changed the world Yes. and allowed the Stones and, and a lot of other bands to follow suit with uh, genre dabbling and combining. Oh yes. To me, that was just the memo you were given is that the, what is now known as the classic rock era told you 
oh, you know, you, you, you can make an album with a slow song and a country song. I mean, Ringo covered Buck Owens, you know? Exactly. And I thought that's what you were supposed to do. If yes. You, if you had pride in your work. And I admire people who are born to be purists, like right. Jimmy Vaughn is oh, a certainly. blessing to the blues. You totally. Know? But I wasn't that guy, and so it's it's held me back. And so, you know, in, in the 90s, because you could, people couldn't put me in a slot. Right. But in the 90s, people started calling me Americana. At first, I was like, what do you mean? I'm rock and roll. <laughs> but now it's like, thank you. You know, I mean, give me your poor, your tired, your right. rootsy. You oh, know? yeah. So Americana, I think, uh, welcomes eclecticism. Talking with Webb Wilder here in Nashville. I'm Eric Dahl for the UK Americana Bar TV show. Back to you, Sam.